Hello everyone, in this video lecture, I am going to discuss the literary devices that has been used in the poem. So let's get started. The first literary device that has been used in this poem is anaphora. So let's understand more about anaphora. The repetition of a word or phrase at the beginning of successive clauses is called anaphora. It is often used in a poem. So uh, we see in a stanza number one, uh, line number second, third and fourth, there is a common word don't. The line second, third and fourth is getting started with a common word that is don't. Let's see. Wind comes softly, don't break the shutters of the windows, don't scatter the papers, don't throw down the books on the shelf. So, uh, according to the definition also, the definition is saying the repetition of a word, okay, at the beginning of successive clauses, okay. So, these are like successive clauses, line number second, third and fourth. And the first word that is beginning is don't, okay. So, in this way, don't is anaphora over here. So now let's look at the second literary device. The second literary device is repetition. It is a literary device which could be a word, a phrase or a full sentence or a poetical line repeated to emphasize its significance in the entire text. Uh, now look at the stanza 3. We see frail crumbling houses, crumbling doors, crumbling rafters, crumbling wood, crumbling bodies, crumbling lives, crumbling hearts. We see the word crumbling has been repeatedly used. So according to the definition, uh, it is a literary device which could be a word, okay, uh, or a poetical line repeated to emphasize its significance, okay. The word crumbling is repeated uh, in the whole of the sentence uh, or the line so as to emphasize or uh, make its uh, significance. So the word crumbling here is example of repetition the device the literary device repetition now let's check which is the third literary device that has been used in the poem the third literary device is alliteration so let's understand what is alliteration it is a literary device in literature it is the conspicuous repetition of identical initial consonant sounds in successive or closely associated syllables within a group of words even those spelled differently Alliteration is also called head rhyme or initial rhyme. So let's understand with the help of uh, its use uh, in the fourth stanza. The wind god winnows and crushes them all. Here we see uh, in the wo second word wind and the fourth word winnows. Actually they are quite close to each other. Okay, And also we see the consonant sound V Okay, is very much prominent and used over here. So here the word number second and in word number fourth we see the use of alliteration. Now let's see the fourth literary device that has been used in the poem. The fourth literary device is personification. As a literary device personification is the projection of characteristics that normally belong only to humans onto inanimate objects, animals, deities or forces of nature. We see in the stanza number two the word you has been used in every line and every sentence okay so uh, what is you over here you is uh, signified for what for wind okay but is wind a living a living thing is it animate no it's inanimate but it has been used in place of a living thing that is a human being it has been used as if a human being or a living thing is doing something wrong or whatever the context is like uh, pretending to be okay so there is one lit one more li uh, literary device that is symbolism now i'm giving you all a task to recognize where the literary device symbolism has used in this poem so let's end this session with a very relevant quote if you don't fight for what you want don't cry for what you lost thank you